and welcome or welcome back to my channel. So again, I am Shami and I usually do travel vlogs but since there is a pandemic, I cannot travel obviously. I just share things that I love on my channel. So it could be Korean drama, movies, TV shows and now we are going to talk about books. My favorite books of all time. So, if you want to know what are the books that I really loved reading, just keep on watching and make sure that you like and subscribe to my channel. Okay, let's go. Another disclaimer before we start, sorry if the aircon noise is quite loud. It's better than hearing my neighbor's um, noise. Some kids are playing outside right now and yeah, the aircon is a better noise than the outside noise. Anyway, let's start. Okay, I've been very vocal about my love for K-pop and Korean drama, but not a lot of people know that I also enjoy reading books. When I was a teenager, I started reading um, inspirational books. When I was a full-time church worker, I read a lot of leadership books and Christian inspirational books. When I became an adult, I started reading ebooks because my problem with reading books is that they are expensive. So one book would cost you like $10 or almost $10 in the bookstore. And I found out that it's possible to download ebooks, although of course some of them are illegal. And I enjoyed reading. Go now to my number one favorite book, which is the Hunger Games trilogy. Yeah, so um, when Hunger Games was shown, I really, really loved the movie, and I couldn't wait for Catching Fire and for the next books to come out. So I that's when I started reading the ebooks. Even if I've already watched the movie, I watched, uh, I read the book of Hunger Games again, and then I read Catching Fire and Mockingjay. So I did not wait for the, the following movies to come out. I couldn't wait actually, so that's why I started reading the books. And this is one of the first ebooks that I've ever read. And they were so good. The thing is, lots of people who read the books and bef before they were turned into a movie, they hated the movie because it's so far, it's so different from the book. But what's good about the Hunger Games trilogy is that they didn't change the story that much. That's why for me, it's really good because that's what the book readers are expecting. Like the storyline should be like this. And even if we already know what's going to happen, we still want to see it in the big screen. That's what Hunger Games did. So the book and the movie are not that different to each other. So I really loved Hunger Games. I volunteer as a tribute. I really love that part. Okay, so much for my number one. Number two is Eleanor and Park by Rainbow Robo. Okay, Eleanor and Park is somehow felt like for teenagers. When I read it, I felt like I went back to being 14 or 15 years old. The uh, main character, Eleanor, was described as uh, a chubby, ugly, um, outcast teenager. She has orange hair and Park is actually a Korean boy. That's why I could relate because I was already teaching um, Korean students that time. And uh, of course, when they present that a character is Korean, they have to show a little bit background of their culture, her, his family, things like that. Yeah, the story was like romance and how Park, like they started sitting together on the bus and they actually enjoyed each other's um, company. They fell in love with each other and the uh, the ending was a little tragic. It's n it didn't have a happy ending. It was actually an open ending. Like the author can um, can add something to the ending. It's a cliffhanger. 
people were expecting for part two or people have been waiting for it to become a movie for the longest time but it, i don't know i think it's not happening um there were issues about this book about issues like about the culture gender things like that but i really didn't care because i enjoyed the story itself so since I like Eleanor and Park, I found out about number three. Number three has three books and they are all written by Rainbow Robo. I will not be spoiling you. I'll try my best not to spoil it. I will not explain all of the books. Um, so, I mean, if you're looking for something to read, you'll have an idea of what are inside these books. Um, Attachment is about a guy working as an IT personnel in their company and his his job is to monitor and to remove unwanted sites like if the if the employees are watching porn or if they're sending illegal messages to each other so technically he can read the messages that employees are sharing and um he described his job as very boring. It's like he's not motivated to go to work at all. But when he started reading an email between two friends, Beth and I forgot the, the name of the They're just sharing their, their normal life. Like the other one has a husband that wanted to have kids, if I remember it correctly. And um, Beth has a boyfriend who is afraid to get married. So they're just exchanging stories every day like, ah, oh, my day was like this, oh, my boyfriend was sweet today, things like that. And um, the IT personnel who was reading the, the messages between the two fell in love with Beth. And it's like, um, he's already fallen in love with Beth. But he doesn't know how he can introduce himself to Beth. Like he, he feels like he's very close to her, but he cannot he couldn't tell her that Hi Beth, I know who you are and I love you because I've been reading your messages to each other. So yeah, it's a fun fun story. And I can somehow relate. I think people can relate to this book because we all have IT personnel in the office and we all have best friends that we are messaging when we are in the office. Fangirl is about Catherine Avery and Levi. Catherine is a fangirl. She's making fan fiction and the fan fiction she's making is somehow like Harry Potter and it actually had a book. Is it Carry On? No, no, no. But yeah, I didn't really enjoy the stories about the fan fiction because the books have those um, stories, what's happening in the book that she's writing, in the fan fiction that she's writing. But I was more interested about her and Levi. Levi has been very supportive for Catherine when Catherine had to go to Nebraska, was that right? Um, from the dorm because her father was sick and Levi drove her all the way to Nebraska but yeah it's a simple romance but people can relate to it and then next is landline um okay I will not share about landline anymore because rainbow roll is taking too much of this vlog okay, so continuing with our number four that will be me before you after you and still me by Jojo Moyes so I read the book me before you even be even before watching the movie so you know how people were getting popcorn before entering the movie house but I was getting tissue because I know I'll be crying a lot I read this book this ebook actually while I was in the office so I kept on crying and not really crying like howling because it's so so sad so the story is about Will Trainer and Clark Will Trainer is a very athletic, rich um, bachelor, but because of a car accident or an accident, um, his body became paralyzed. I forgot how they call it, but um, from neck down, he cannot move it himself. So he kind of lost the will to live or the purpose to live because he can't do the things he used to do. 
he feels worthless. So he's already set. He already knows that he wants to actually die. While Clark was hired as his caregiver and she got the job not knowing that Will wanted to die. Um, all the while taking care of him, she's trying to convince him to keep on living. Um, they actually fell in love with each other and she thought she's already changed his mind. But that's not what happened and yeah this movie has a lot of issues too especially from christian groups of course because killing yourself is not supposed to be an option but oh my gosh should i say my take on this i'm a christian and um yeah i don't agree with suicide but watching this movie made me think with an open mind in some places on earth something like this happens um, not a lot and maybe we don't know about it but it happens and some people prefer to do that not everyone it's just one person's point of view and I hope it, it does not affect other people's point of view in life yeah I'm against killing yourself of course but watching this movie made me understand that there are people goes through things that you don't understand and like even if we really really love them sometimes we can't do but we can't do anything but to respect their decision because we are not living their lives okay but let's not um, focus on that um, next is after you that's the next book after me before you so after you is dealing with how Clark lived after Will died Some people did not like this book and I think it's because she moved on she had a new boyfriend Maybe they wanted her to keep being loyal, to keep on thinking about Will, but that's life. Life goes on. She cannot keep on crying about Will because she needs to live. So I liked, I liked After You, even if a lot of people said it's not as good as me before you. Of course, it's not as good as me before you because Will is not there anymore, but Clark has to live. So, um, from this series, um, I got the quote, um, Live boldly, push yourself, don't settle, just live. So, I really, really love that quote. If I have the budget, I'll have a neon sign out of it and put it here on my wall. Also, can you see? I have new decors in my room. Okay, but... Anyway, moving on, still not sure, but I think this is the next book after um, after you, and I'm still not finished reading it. I am I'm here, so I just finished this part. This book has been with me for one year, and I don't know why I can't continue reading it. It's also good. I mean, if me before you dealt with them falling in love, Will dying, and after you dealt with how Clark continued to live, um, struggled to continue living, um, still me is Clark standing up again with her own feet. So yeah, I'm gonna finish that before this year ends. So number five, I've read all John Green books and my top two will be an abundance of catherines yeah that's my number five um an abundance of catherines and number six is looking for alaska so what i love about john green's books is that the characters always have a special power not really power but like there's one genius who is so obsessed with people's last words before they die um, that's for looking for Alaska and an abundance of Catherine um, The character is also a genius and he has a thing about names something like that. So 
so the the title is an abundance of Catherines because all his ex-girlfriends are named Catherines so I'm not gonna dig deep on these stories but I want you to read it okay number seven to all the boys I've loved before trilogy by Jenny Han before to all the boys I've loved before was shown on Netflix I already said it out I have to read the book before watching the movie so I finished reading it and I couldn't wait for the movie to come out on Netflix and I loved the book so much the first movie was so-so it's okay they did well Lara G Lana Condor yeah Lana Condor and Noah Centino did a great job with the first movie it's so good but the second movie was uh, it's so bad for me I did not enjoy it um, Lara Jean was wearing a fake fake wig and in the book the second leading man was better than Noah or than what's his name I forgot okay so I'm not gonna tell more about the story of the trilogy because I don't want to spoil anything but the book is so much enjoyable than the movie go and read the trilogy okay number eight the weight of zero the author is Karen Fortunati I am not really familiar with her but I just went to the bookstore and there's a sale bought it for two dollars yeah, I read the book for two dollars so this book dealt about mental illness and I really love learning more about mental in illness with the books that I read because I can understand people more or when people are acting in this way I I mean I can widen my perspective and understand what is happening to to even myself so not just other I think is it depression yeah she has a depression and she knows uh, she tried killing herself but it did not succeed but she feels like any time that she's becoming happy zero will come and get her zero is like the depression and that she's going to kill herself again because she doesn't deserve to be happy something like that so yeah it's a good read number nine is the subtle art of not giving up all right so this book was so so famous i saw a lot of celebrities reading this book and i actually don't give up to a lot of people so i decided to read this and to be honest i think i had this for two years now and i still have a few pages to read like this i loved how it started like it's true to its title not giving up but the latter part is about giving up <laughs> okay so the latter part is all about caring about the things that he said to you don't have to care about so I don't really enjoy the latter part that's why I'm struggling to finish it and take note of my bookmark like BT21 stuff now we are down with our number 10 so number 10 is every day by David Levitan I think this is his first book that I've ever read one of my friends um, lent me her book before the Korean movie Beauty Inside was shown i've already read this so when while i was watching beauty inside like the story is very similar but the main character changes her or his appearance every day so sometimes she's a woman a girl or, he's, or sometimes he's a man or a little boy or sometimes he's gay so um he or she is a different person every day and imagine falling in love with a person when you have a condition like that like how can you be committed or be in a relationship with that um, in that situation so the main character wakes up every day in a different body and it was so weird while I was reading it it was so so weird it weirded the hell out of me but when I watched Beauty Inside the movie I kind of understood it more and aside from the Korean movie there's also Korean drama about it but I like the movie more 
So yeah, I think that's it for my top 10 books that I've ever read. Um, I read mostly ebooks because again, paper books are expensive and my mom has a habit of just throwing them away when you're not reading them. But I still want to keep on collecting books if I have the budget for that. If you have any opinion about the books that I just mentioned or if you have any suggestions of other books that I should be reading, just leave a comment below and I'll be reading them. So I think that's it and I'll see you in the next vlog. Thank you for watching. Bye!